Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on where you are. Uh, today, we're going to talk about um, making dashboards like automatically faster uh, using some tools we already know about, like recording rules. And also, we're going to dive into kind of the M3 aggregation tier. Uh, my name is Shreyas. Uh, I'm a software engineer at Chronosphere. Uh, we're working on building a hosted metrics and monitoring platform, uh, targeting kind of large scale, high throughput use cases. Um, I'm interested in all things observability, uh, but primarily kind of focusing on making use of metrics and traces to solve like interesting problems. Uh, prior to this, I was on the observability team at Uber, working on kind of like building out and scaling the alerting platform there. The agenda for today is kind of setting up the problem, uh, looking at kind of like high cardinality metrics and why they're a challenge. Um, then we're gonna talk about kind of aggregating metrics using recording rules and the M3 aggregation tier and kind of like how that is, uh, yeah, how we can kind of make dashboards faster using that. Uh, then we kind of talk about how we make things easy to use. Uh, and finally, we kind of round out with the demo and kind of a Q and A. So to set up the problem for kind of most of this talk, we're gonna take C advisor as an example. Uh, which provides essentially resource usage and performance metrics uh, of running containers. Um, this dashboard taken is kind of the C advisor dashboard from Grafana. Uh, as you can see, it has some amount of uh, aggregated information and some amount of like individual kind of like pod level information. So it has like, it's tracking 5,000 containers. You have some aggregate stats like CPU usage, network traffic, uh, et cetera. You also have like per part stats like CPU usage and memory usage, uh, which are useful. So the aggregate stats kind of give you an idea that something is wrong. And then the more like per part stats kind of help you root cause better. Um, so this has like tons of dimensions uh, because it wants to you to kind of slice and dice metrics in different forms. Uh, so what do these dimensions actually do? If you consider a simple metric, kind of CPU usage, you end up having like 16,000 series and it takes 20 seconds to actually query this information, like, which is really slow. Um, this is because like, you can see the so many different uh, tags on it. Like there's a part ID, there's an instance, uh, there's the image and so on and so forth. Uh, if you only consider the two labels that you're interested in and we actually aggregate this using a recording rule, then this query becomes a way more manageable, like 230 series and just takes like half a second to actually like get back information. Uh, and in most cases, this is actually all the information we want. Uh, now, the reason for getting so many series here is like, even though it's kind of like containing, it's kind of something is tracking one instance, as things get restarted, like as the pod gets restarted, rescheduled, like a new time series shows up. So there are more things actually getting stored in the time series database, which don't have data currently, but when you actually like query for like 30 minutes or like a few hours of data, you end up pulling time series, which should not exist. So it basically results in like slowing dashboards and dashboards, which kind of like constantly degrading, like degrade over time. Uh, as mentioned, this is because kind of the cardinality of dimensions keep increasing. As you add new instances, roll out new images, like things basically, yeah, we keep adding dimensions and things keep slowing up. So this basically results in kind of slower dashboards. Slower dashboards results in kind of browser locking up and a bad user experience. So when an engineer notices this, uh, the dashboard needs to be optimized, like how we actually kind of go up, go about doing this. The first step is kind of figuring out which queries are the culprit. Uh, you inspect the requests, you could inspect the request from a dashboard to look for slow queries. Uh, you could do this in kind of Chrome inspector. You could use the Prometheus query log uh, to do this and kind of associate back and yeah, and try to associate back to the dashboard, but this is difficult because uh, the Prometheus query log has like all the queries running in the system and the dashboard itself, uh, like you may have many, many dashboards. Um, 
but given that we figure out kind of which are the culprit, you probably want to do some form of pre-aggregation of these metrics to make these queries faster. Um, and over the next few slides, we will kind of talk about a few of these like pre-aggregation, like a few ways we can actually pre-aggregate things. Uh, the first thing I want to talk about is recording rules. Uh, this is something Prometheus provides support for and kind of they're like widely used for this purpose. Uh, they basically allow kind of pre-computing queries and kind of storing back aggregate time series to the TSDB. Once you do that, you essentially, instead of making the query, which kind of looks at all the series, the dashboard is just making a query, which is like picking back one series. Um, so it's like super fast. Um, and the caveat is that now the dashboard now has to go and you need to point it back to the pre-computer time series. So you need to go and like change the dashboard to actually access the individual time series. A recording rule looks like something like the below. Uh, you have a record, which is basically the new time series you're storing stuff in. Um, and then the expression, which is like whatever prompt you had expression you want to get executed. So you can put anything as complicated as you want here. Uh, and as mentioned, the record is essentially a new time series. Um, so to basically create recording rules, you need to know what to pre-compute. So we figure out the bad, bad queries by doing some form of analysis on the dashboard. Um, then you basically go configure these recording rules um, and you can go and change the dashboard to kind of query the recording rule metrics uh, instead of the underlying metrics. So it's a real long manual process. But say you've actually done this. Uh, what happens when one of these metrics changes, like the query for the recording rule has changed or a new panel becomes slow? You basically have to repeat this process all over again uh, and kind of do the same manual processing again and again. The second thing is recording rules are very expensive. Uh, they basically execute and pre-compute this query at regular intervals. So a query accessing many time series can get expensive very quickly, um, especially when kind of the dimensionality of the underlying metrics keep increasing. Uh, and the, given that these kind of run alongside other queries in the system like dashboards and alerts, uh, they have the potential to kind of overwhelm the query engine. Uh, so those are kind of a couple of like really bad um, aspects of kind of using recording rules and which we need to kind of be uh, careful about. Um, but as mentioned before, sometimes for underlying metrics, we don't actually need all these dimensions. So it'd be nice if we can actually like, get rid of these completely and not store them. What we care about is just the aggregate and we don't really care about kind of the underlying metrics themselves. So it would be great if we can do that. And that's kind of where the M3 aggregation tier comes in. So M3 is a remote storage for Prometheus. Uh, and the M3 aggregation tier allows us to kind of move the expensive recording rule computation to streaming aggregation. So when uh, Prometheus remote write comes into M3, uh, it sees that some metrics need aggregation and kind of it forwards it to the M3 aggregation tier the M3 aggregation tier basically knows um, what rules uh, to apply on what metrics. It applies those aggregations and then sends it back to the coordinator to actually like persist it into long-term storage in M3DB. So the aggregator basically allows downsampling, dropping, or aggregating metrics prior to persisting them to the time series database. Uh, the aggregator supports kind of two different types of rules. Uh, one of them is called roll-up rules, which allow aggregating these metrics. Uh, and second is mapping rules, which basically allow kind of dropping random metrics. Uh, we're gonna first, we're gonna talk about both of these, but first we're gonna dive into roll-up rules. Uh, roll-up rules are a way to uh, aggregate metrics. So they basically have a series of transforms which are applied in order uh, to kind of change and generate a new metric. Uh, and the metrics kind of applied to depend on kind of what filter actually matches. It also has something called a storage policy, which basically determines like where, like what 
like where to store the generated time series in M3DB. So talking about kind of one by one, uh, the first step is kind of what we call like a transform or an increase or a delta transform. Uh, the underlying metrics which come from Prometheus are kind of monotonically increasing like counters. <clears throat> so it's, we can't really aggregate them as is. So we need to apply e the equivalent of kind of the Prometheus rate function first. So that's exactly what the increase transform is. It essentially applies the Prometheus rate function, gets diffs between successive data points and kind of generates a new time series for kind of use by the next level of the transform. The next level of the transform is called the rollup. Uh, it essentially sums the deltas by the unique dimensions specified in the group by. In this case, we're only interested in container name and namespace. So it does a sum by container, container namespace in like PromQL language. Uh, and it stores the generated thing as a different metric name. Now the metric name is interesting. Uh, if you're actually using a mapping rule to drop the original metrics, then we can basically store the rolled up metric as with the same metric name as uh, like as the original metric. Uh, if you're not planning to kind of drop the underlying metrics, then this metric name needs to be different, just like it's in uh, in the recording rule case. But the advantage of actually like dropping the metrics and storing the metrics uh, using the same name is that dashboards, alerts, or anything which is actually querying these metrics now just query the aggregate rather than the high dimensional metric. So that's something to keep in mind. Uh, <clears throat> now, finally, like after we've rolled things up and we've kind of reduced the dimensionality, we want to store this back into the TSTB. So we need to go back from dealing with deltas to actual kind of the cumulatively like increasing, like monotonically increasing time series. So we apply kind of a cumulative add operation uh, for each of the metrics uh, to kind of get the aggregated like monotonically increasing time series. Um, this is basically sent to M3DB namespaces identified kind of by the storage policies and things get stored there. Now, as mentioned before, like if you actually want to go and store the metric kind of with the same name as the original, like original metric, then we need a way to kind of drop the, like the raw, like high dimensional metrics. Uh, this is where kind of mapping rules come into play. So mapping rules also have a filter, uh, which basically says, oh, these are the metrics that I'm actually interested in. Um, match these metrics and just drop them, do not store them. So the rollup rules would still apply, but they won't actually get stored to the TSDB. So the combination of rollup rules and mapping rules, uh, we can get like aggregation, like really easily, like at ingestion time. Uh, so to summarize kind of the aggregation tier, uh, it basically allows for kind of ingestion time streaming aggregation, uh, the metrics, can be aggregated or rolled up based on like whatever rules you provide, uh, different functions are possible. Um, and I think the key thing really is that there's a way to kind of like drop the raw metrics based on these matching filters, which gives us the like the great characteristic that dashboards and alerts and different queries could automatically sped up. Uh, so we really have like two ways of doing things. Uh, we just wanna quickly like go over pros and cons of recording rules and rollup rules. So recording rules are generally like, they are general purpose and they support full PromQL. So uh, if you have this like super complicated, like expensive query, which we wanna speed up, then recording rules are probably the way to go. Uh, the caveat is that they're expensive uh, because they run against the regular query engine uh, and they also kind of affect other queries. Uh, so uh, you're actually querying like if you have a recording rule going and like aggregating across 20,000 time series, a recording rule every minute or every interval goes and queries those 20,000 time series and does aggregates and stores them back. Uh, and uh, Third kind of, yeah, I guess bigger point is that kind of all the data needs to be stored. So there's a very high storage cost. You cannot uh, 
like with recording rule, you will store the low dimensionality information and high dimension and uh, aggregate information at the same, like high dimensionality information and aggregate information at the same time. Uh, which also means that kind of your dashboards and queries and alerts need to mod be modified to actually like hit the uh, hit the aggregated metric instead of the like the original metrics. Uh, Rollup rules, because of the way they happen at ingestion time, are much more efficient to run. Uh, we have the option of only storing the aggregates we need and dropping other series. Um, and if we go the route of only storing the aggregates, then you kind of get automatic query speed up uh, because the aggregate ends up having the same metric name as the original metrics. Uh, the biggest kind of caveat with rollup rules is they don't support full prompt QL, but rather like specific aggregates. Uh, we are we have been kind of adding more and more of these uh, aggregates aggregate functions over time, but it's unlikely that recording like rollup rules would support everything that recording would support. So now that we have these like two things to like two ways of kind of aggregating things, like how do we kind of make it easy uh, to do these aggregations? So we're gonna talk about kind of uh, two, we're gonna talk about kind of a couple of different things uh, around like, uh, so we're going to talk about this tool, which we call kind of the high car analogy analyzer, uh, which makes it easy. Um, yeah, which basically makes it easy to go and like uh, do this. Yeah, which basically makes it easy to kind of go and do this analysis and kind of like uh, create these recording rules and roll up rules. Uh, so I'm going to share screen again here. So this is actually available as a tool on GitHub. Uh, the link to this is posted sometime like um, in the latter part of the, um, yeah, in the latter part of the talk. So we have, um, it, we're basically gonna make use of the Prometheus like query logs and we're gonna analyze them and we're gonna do like some operations to actually go and like uh, speed things up. So the purpose of this example, I emitted some metrics locally just to kind of get like some basic information um, for the purposes of this demo. So it's not really high cardinality information with too many series. It's just a handful of queries. Um, so what does a, the query log actually have? It has some query information here uh, of what the exact query was, when it started, uh, and then different stats, like how long it took to eval, how long it took to sort, like the query preparation time, any inner evaluation, and so on. Um, so kind of just to run this, uh, we have like this high car analyzer, we point it to a sample query log. Um, we give it some targets saying, I'm only interested in queries which have kind of a minimum query time of like 0 0.01 seconds uh, because it's a, smaller example um, and then we have kind of oh I want to only like filter out queries which have happened at least two times so this actually shows you some like some options here uh, then the query log like the analyzer has this way of like generating recording rules for these queries that we identified uh, and we actually see recording rules here um, and it has another mode where you kind of can generate roll-up rules and generate mapping rules. So what exactly is this like analyzer doing? So let's jump back to the slides uh, and kind of talk about that. Uh, so analyzer like primarily kind of uses the Prometheus query logs. Uh, it logs all of these queries kind of like run by the engine uh, and the query log has information about kind of where time was spent in the query. So the analyzer is kind of an offline process, a standalone tool to generate recording and or rollup rules. Um, as mentioned, it uses the Prometheus query log to find good candidates for aggregation. Uh, and it provides some recommendations for recording rules or kind of M3 aggregator rollup and mapping rules to create uh, and speed up expensive queries. 
Uh, so it just provides recommendations and then users kind of have the option of taking these recommendations and going and creating the actual rules themselves uh, and kind of speeding up their dashboards. So a few steps like we would do is you basically have like days worth of Prometheus query logs. Um, so we have enough information to know like which are the repeated queries, which repeated expensive queries, which are being run on the system. So we want to kind of find these most commonly hit expensive queries. Uh, once we kind of get information about that, we want to kind of check the cost of these queries are due to number of series. So the cost of a query could be due to multiple different reasons. It could just be because it's going querying like large chunks of data, uh, large chunks of like a few series, essentially over like a huge like sequence of time, or it could be like querying many, many series of data uh like yeah many series of data uh, and the cost like even when it queries many series of data if it's actually returning all the data then you can't really speed things up but um if it's actually acquiring many underlying series from the tsdb and then it's kind of aggregating them together into like a fewer set of series like those are kind of the candidates like candidate queries we're actually looking for. So we want to basically look at kind of like uh, the cardinality of the queries which are actually being run and kind of use that uh, and only optimize those queries. Uh, so once it kind of identifies these uh, these queries which actually need to be uh, need to be uh, need to be sped up, uh, we provide proposals for kind of recording and roll-up rules to create. Um, and then users are kind of like free to go and like configure these rules as necessary. Um, if the user kind of goes and creates recording rules, then dashboard and other places where these rules uh, are being applied need to be changed. Um, if we're talking about kind of roll-up rules, then, and the user has already gone and like the user also said that they want to kind of drop the underlying metrics, then the queries will kind of get sped up automatically uh, as the query actually captures the aggregated metric. Um, in case the rollup rule is not dropping the underlying series, then like um, then you like recording rules, you'd have to go and kind of like change uh, change dashboards and other places where things have run. Uh, so we built this tool. Um, it's available open source. The link to this is in the next, like uh, in like the last last slide. Um, so yeah, we encourage you to go and like try this out, uh, and let us know kind of how this works out for you. Uh, so thank you so much. Um, we're open to questions now. Uh, if you want to kind of know more about kind of the M3 aggregation tier, like reach out, do reach out to us on the M3 Slack channel. Um, and there's a link to kind of the high cardinality analyzer available here. Um, yeah, there's a link to the high cardinality analyzer available here for you to kind of try out. Thank you again.